Hey guys, George at Soundtracks here, and this week we're going to talk about hyperlighting, how the decoder determines how to illuminate the lights, and what goes on behind the scenes. So let's get started. So first off, the term hyperlight refers to our first product as a company as Soundtracks, called the hyperlight. It was the first processor-driven lighting module in model railroading. Now we've kept that term because it was a very unique term, but it's very descriptive. It's deciding how the lights are illuminated, including things like Mars lights, gyro lights, rotary beacons, and so forth. So the question becomes, how do we set that up in our decoder? Now first off, let's take a step back. When our decoder receives a command from the command station, it doesn't say, hey, turn on the hyperlights or turn on the Mars light or whatever. The command from the DCC system is actually turn on F0, turn on F24. The decoder then has to go into function mapping to determine what to turn on. And we've done prior videos on that in our YouTube channel, so be sure to check those archived videos for more information. Now once the decoder has determined, for example, the F0 turns on the headlight, how does the decoder know what to do? Well, once it's turned on the headlight, then it goes into the hyperlight CVs. And the hyperlight CVs, the first one, CV49, determines what lighting effect is active. So by default, the what's called diesel light is on. And what this is, this is a very quick but graduated lighting effect where the light comes on very quickly. So now let's grab our throttle and we're going to go ahead and turn on F0 and you can kind of see how that's a graduated light. It's very quick but it's a graduated light. Let's do it again. Now if I was to simply turn this to an on off light, so I would take CB49 which is my headlight hyperlight effect and I set it to a value of 0 which is strictly an on off. So now when I turn the light off and when I turn it on, it's an instant on. It's a very subtle lighting effect, but it's a really cool one because as that element warms up, that light becomes a little brighter. And that's what we're intending to follow. Now other hyperlight effects are things like Mars lights and gyro lights and rotary beacons. So if I want my headlight to act like a Mars light, I can simply take CV49 and enable a Mars light. And now when you look at the lighting pattern, you're actually seeing that Mars light pattern. Now, once we've determined how to illuminate the light, what type of lighting effect, there are a few other qualifiers that still have to come into play. First off is in CV57 and 58, and these determine the directionality. So in this case, CV57 sets which lights turn on when the locomotive is moving in the forward direction. CV58 determines what lights turn on when moving in the reverse direction. So this is where ditch lights, class lights, and things like that can be set to be directional, but by default are on in both directions. The only one that's directional is the headlight and the backup light. So if you go to the CV, you'll notice that in CV57, the backup light is disabled. But in CV58, it's the headlight that is disabled. This allows you to make directional. So if you want your ditch lights to be on only in the forward direction, and you're using the FX3 and the FX4 for your alternating flashing ditch lights, when you go to CV57, you're going to make sure that they are enabled in the forward direction, but in CV58, you're going to disable them in the reverse direction. Now the next qualifier is what's called the flash rate, and it determines how fast the lighting effect is going to be displayed. Things like alternating flashing ditch lights, you can have them flash really quickly or you can have them flash really slowly. So you can match your prototype based on what locomotive that you're working on. Same thing with the Mars light. You can determine how fast that lighting pattern is going to be. And that's what the flash rate does. A range of 0 to 15 where 0 is the fastest flash rate and 15 is the slowest. Now the next qualifier and one of the last ones is what is the hold time? Now if you have something enabled with crossing logic, such as our ditch lights, this is where we determine how long that lighting effect is going to be displayed once the horn is pressed off. So we set that from a value of 0 to 15 for 0 to 15 seconds. Now once you've played around with these, there are a few other CVs that are involved. If you've selected a constant dim light, for example the number boards on this locomotive are a constant dim light. Now when I turn on the F6, you can actually see that the number boards are illuminated, but they're very dim. Now I can use CV61 to determine the brilliance. So when I go in here and set CV61, I'm going to set it to a value of 200 to really brighten them up. So you can see how they've turned on a little brighter, but they're still not quite as bright as a headlight. 
This allows you to decide how bright you want your number boards or class lights, or in the case of trucks lights underneath the locomotive frame, you can determine how bright those are gonna be for you. Now there's a lot more you can do with this and I encourage you to go through and play with it because you won't break the decoder by changing CVs. You may find a lighting effect you really like. Now for more information, please go to our website at soundtracks.com under the manuals tab and be sure to check out the Steam and Diesel Users Guide and find out how you can play with those and what CV values you can try and what lighting effects.